So I'm incredibly excited about this interview because I've been listening to your content for 20 plus years when we had tapes, which obviously kids these days don't know the struggle, right? Everything's just at their <laughs> fingertips. I had to carry tapes around. I remember the first time I heard one of your tapes, I was like, I don't know who this dude is, but I can't wait to meet him. I obviously got to build a relationship with you. And, and those tapes for reference were a business that Mike was building. And those tapes were about how to build that business. And it was more than just building the business. I think even through Mike's tapes, I was just attracted to his energy. Even then, uh, you've always had a big energy, but not like my big energy. Mine, mine's almost in, like, I want to fight people. Yours is, uh, yours is just, I don't know. So been listening to Mike's tapes. He's a very successful entrepreneur. And, uh, I mean, you almost have the Midas touch, I feel like, um, and today we're going to be talking about faith, religion, uh, manifestation, and all kinds of fun stuff. So I'm, I'm super excited about this interview because A, I know when you leave, I'm going to feel great. And B, uh, I can't wait to get into the actual subject matter of what we're going to talk about. Uh, but yeah, and then I'll, I'll, so welcome to the show, Mike. And thank you for yeah, coming up. You. I appreciate Absolutely. you, buddy. Yeah. Um, so our history is a, a business we were both building in your success tapes, and I was in college. And I remember listening to your tapes and just thinking, man, I got to meet this dude. Uh, you were telling stories about leaving the academy and engineering and, and getting free. And, and uh, yeah, and then I got to meet you. And I, I've, been, I've been following you around ever since. So, Well, uh, yeah, I'm excited to share. I think, uh, you know, you, you, you said something like the Midas touch. I think we all have the Midas touch. I think we were created that way. I think we were born that way. Mm. <clears throat> and then through uh, coaches, parenting, religion, they kind of teach you out of it. Yeah. But I think you were born, um, you were born magnificent. And if we get into the scriptures, the, the original Greek and Hebrew really talk about that. They talk about yeah. a very different concept than what we were taught in Western theology. Yeah. Can't wait to get into that. So, so let's talk about your origin, because I know you've talked about it a bunch on stages and on yeah. tapes, uh, which for, again, kids, if you don't know what a tape is, it's what they used to put sound on, and people used to plug that into a, a, a hole in their dashboard and listen to things. Um, you might be able to get one at a Goodwill, <laughs> yeah. a tape recorder. Right? I, I, I bet even Goodwill would be like, what is that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so give us your quick origin and, and how you kind of became what I would consider an outlier. Yeah, it's, um, <clears throat> you know, I grew up uh, the youngest of seven with a single mom, and uh, I saw my mom really struggle. And she was a teacher. She was... Uh, very brilliant lady. And so I was taught under this idea that uh, if you go to school, get a good job, get a great education, then that you're set for life. But I looked at her life and I thought, well, she's one of the smartest ladies I know. Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't have a good life. You know, I slept, I slept on the floor of the couch till sixth grade because we're seven kids in this house. So, <clears throat> but one of the, the, here's how influential I think other people and what we, what we believe about ourselves is, um, when I was six, I graduated from kindergarten. My oldest brother graduated from West Point, the, the military academy. And uh, I remember, you know, driving the whole family three days to get from here to New York City. And, uh, uh, and the president, it was President Ford at the time, gave him his diploma. So I'm from this little Iowa farm town. That was the pinnacle of success to me. Your brother graduating West Point. Seeing the president give him his diploma. Mm -hmm. you, know, you're, yeah. you learned about, I just graduated kindergarten, so you learned about the president, and I'm like, are you, the president gave my brother a diploma? Yeah. So I, uh, here's the influence people have on us, especially at a young age. I just said, someday the president's going to give me my diploma. Mm -hmm. I wish I would have said, someday I'm going to be a billionaire, because that would have <laughs> saved me a lot of time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that was the influence. And so... Um, that little thing, I think what we believe, it's literally stored in every cell in our body. And it takes you right where you want to go ultimately. Mm. And so sure enough, you know, through this route, um, graduated from the Air Force Academy and President Bush gave me my diploma. Here's the freedom part. I thought that was the pinnacle success. I remember getting out and uh, as a second lieutenant, you know, you're 
I was class president, valedictorian, all these different things, right? That, you were valedictorian at the Air Force Academy? No, 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 not the oh, Academy. Oh. No, I played rugby at the Air Force Academy. <laughs> <laughs> That's where it all went downhill. That's right. <laughs> I know Chris did too. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I remember getting out, but, uh, you know, that's the caliber of people that, that get there, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, uh, um, and I just remember going, they pay me 24000 a year, not a month, a year. And I thought this, somehow, this idea that education is the answer just hit me in the face again. I'm like, this is ridiculous. I did everything I thought I was supposed to do, and they're paying me 24000 a year. Yeah. Right? So... When we saw the the business plan that you and I saw, and they said, "Hey, you just need to go do these things on the internet, um, help six people do this, and they'll pay you two hundred fifty thousand, and you're free." Freedom was a concept that I've, has driven me. I know you. If we're entrepreneurs, oh, yeah. it's freedom is what we're after. And why is that? Because we're born from we're if we're born whatever we call it. You and I were talking about this beforehand. I don't care what you call it. Whether you call it God, the Spirit, the Universe, I don't really care. Everybody's trying to describe the same essence of life, this creation that we all know we're a part of, because mm-hmm. um, I'm pretty sure I didn't create it in my conscious mind. I, right, here I right. am, right? <clears throat> um, but it's pr- completely free. So this idea that you're limited is very hard on us, meaning you can't do this. You don't have enough money for that. Uh, we're driven by these three big fears. I call them the big three. Is uh, I'm not loved enough, lack of love. Mm. I don't have enough health, lack of health. Yeah. yeah. And I don't have enough abundance. I don't have enough supply. Say those three one more time. Yeah. So it's, it's lack of love, lack of health, right? And lack of abundance or money or supply, whatever you want to call it. Though every other fear is related to those three in some way. Mm. And the truth is we're born perfection and then we're taught out of it, right? <clears throat> so this idea that uh, uh, what was always really interesting to me was, Okay, so I was told I got to go to school. I got to get good grades. This is the answer. So did all that, you know, right? Go to the academy, um, did the thing. And then the minute you get out, they go, now you need to start planning for retirement. Right. <clears throat> it made no sense to me. Yeah. So I got to go all, do the, all this work and then go get a job. And then the next thing I need to do is plan how to get out of the job. Right. Stupid to me. Right. And defer life for 60 years. That's exactly how I felt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly how I felt. In fact, I remember there's this time at the academy. It's uh, 8 o'clock before the start of your junior year. Before that, you don't owe them any time. After that, you owe them time, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember the the alarm went off. They called academic call to quarters. And uh, I remember sitting there going, I guess my life's over. Wow. That's what I thought, honestly, because I go, now I have to grow up. Well, and go make a living, which sounded horrible to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. From that's a rugby player. Yeah. Right. It's the worst. And the truth is, is uh, when you really understand who you are, that uh, you can create anything you want, mm. you can create it. Yeah. Then you can go design your life. You're not limited. Yeah. So that's been my journey ever since is go follow people that I saw like, wow, they have a life that I really want. Yeah. What did they do? Right. And that's led us to where we are today. And it works for everybody. Yeah. Multiple successful businesses. You, you got free, quote unquote. Yeah. Uh, whatever you want to call it. Meaning my driver was I wanted to never, I wanted to wake up at 9 a.m. on any day of the week and have a cup of coffee. And just that. And, and enjoy it. And look at my wife and go, babe, what do you want to do <laughs> Not today? Not slam it while you're taking yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Driving to work. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So my kids think it's really weird. They've never seen mom and dad have a real... Job. career, job, whatever you want to call it. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah. And that, and multiple successful businesses since, and now right. a successful, I don't, I don't know what you got mad at me last time I called it the M word, the what ministry, but now oh. a successful <laughs> teaching platform, which, yeah. which will be the, the, the basis of this conversation. So one of the things I want to talk about and that, that we were talking about that just geeks us both out is so is sort of like seeking and looking for answers. Yes. Um, the business we got into, you know, I was in with Mike, taught me how to seek and read and, and look for answers. And it's been a habit I've consistently stayed with for life, which, uh, yeah, I mean, I recommend everybody. I mean, I mean, yeah, that's I look the, at that. like, that's it. That's yeah, fun. Yeah. It's right? all there. Yeah. Um, so fast forwarding. So how did you, how did you start this new journey you're on with, um, because because the business we were in was sort of not faith based, but it was faith heavy, I would call it. Yeah. The, the leaders were, were pretty influential and, in, 
yeah express their faith very openly yeah so so you were basically a practicing christian essentially yeah. and yeah. then you started to kind of go down a new path yeah because uh um and we can talk about what just this last week even t- from a you know from a western christian theology versus um uh, my business partners now are Jewish. Yeah. It's very interesting. We, we, had, we had a really cool talk about some of this stuff. But um, <clears throat> I realized that, uh, well, you and I had the same influence. So we're, these business leaders were openly expressing their faith was int- intriguing to us. Right. Meaning maybe they have an answer for something that we don't know. Well, it was always, Mike, the, the thing that intrigued me was like, you know, I was coming out of college and, and doing drugs and drinking beer and, and womanizing everybody, trying to sleep with everything, <laughs> you know, uh, you know. He said it, not me. Yeah, was, I'm very open about it. Yeah, I was a train wreck uh, fighting everybody, you know, um, and I, and I, and frankly, like most people, I was lost. And just like you, I got to the end of college and was like, this can't be it. Right. right? Like this, right. it's all over now. I don't yeah. get to have, I don't get to enjoy the process. Uh, I remember even studying obscure things like construction management because like everyone else, I went into college and it was like, you know, pick a major. And I was like, I don't, that was exactly why? me. Why do I have to like, pick a what major? Do I, what yeah. does that mean? Right? I just want to do business. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And I, and I, I got to this point where I was looking for answers. You know, I've, I've always joked that I've always been into, you know, back in the day it was steroids and creatine and, and you know, how can I biohack my life? And right. I met these guys who, who seemed genuinely happy and excited. And, and we're going to talk a lot on this podcast. I and I can't wait for it, especially I can't wait for these two to hear it either about manifestation and yeah. the energy you bring into the world. And yeah. I met all these dudes who had all this crazy energy and I was like, I don't know what that is, yeah. but I want to tap into whatever that is. Yeah. And I know they're all mostly sober. So there's, it's not drugs or alcohol talking and yeah. And then someone said it was God. And I was like, well, I'm, I'm all in, like, how do I get involved? And at the time it made me a pariah because I'm, I'm going to these meetings. I'm, this is my senior year of college. I was on tour, right? Imagine going from like Motley Crue, to, to like now I go to church and I'm trying to convert everybody. I do that now. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's still my life. Yeah. So uh, it made me sort of a pariah. So I'm like going to church instead of going to the bar and I'm, you know, like you, I just dove in and I started looking for answers. And I remember thinking, you know, you hear enough messages and you think, man, if I could tap into the divine, yeah, what couldn't I accomplish? Yeah. It's and unlimited. so I started going down that road. Yeah, I think, um, see, all of us have that intuitively, Yeah. right? But then we see somebody that maybe we, they might have something that we don't have. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and um, for me, it was, so, you know, we were going to this mega church. We respected the pastor, this big, you know, he, it had the trappings of success. Mm. It's like, oh, okay, he's built this thing. He must know what he's talking about. The problem that I had is, uh, whether it was grace or whatever you want to call it, Barb and I, as you know, we would go to these major, major mega ministries and, and uh, somehow we got behind the veil very quickly. Like mm. we could sit down as friends like this. Mm-hmm. So they weren't the guy or the gal on stage in front of 10,000 people. We're, we're having a cigar, whatever, right? Right, right. And so after one or two or three questions, they didn't have answers. Right. What, what do you mean by questions? Like, well, if we grew up in Western theology, it would be like this. This is, uh, if you ask any kid, they would go, if you're God, this is kind of how they think. God knows everything, right? Mm-hmm. That's kind of how we, mm-hmm. he's omniscient. It's all the omnis, omnipresent, omniscient, um, you know, all the omnis. And so, so he had to know the beginning from the end. If I was a parent, I wouldn't want to torture any of my kids. I say this all the time, dude. If I used to have this argument with guys we know. Yes. Oh, well, I'd, be like, I'd be like, yeah. okay, so God, God created us in his image, correct? Yes. Those yes. are your words yes. that you preach on Sundays. He knew every thought we were ever going to have, knew our destiny, essentially. Yep. We were made perfectly, which means he would have made Satan, right? Yep. But, but why, why? Would he, why would he do that? Why, why would a, I heard a talk you gave the other day where you said you were kind of illustrating the idea of love. Like, if you love this much, yeah. imagine how much God loves. Yes. And I remember watching Andy with his kids and going, man, if he loves his kids that much, and it is true that a divine spiritual being loves us more than we can think or ask, why would he create hell? Why, why would there be this ultimate setup of... Why, yeah, why tempt somebody knowing the end result that they're going to fail? You made me and know that I would be tempted. <laughs> That's right. Why would you do that? It seems That's cruel. Right. You made me a rugby player. You knew it was going to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
right? You made me very sexual. You made yeah. me, you made me uh, all these things. Yes. You knew what was going to happen. Yes. You also knew porn was going to get invented. You knew all these things were going to yeah. happen. Like why, why do that? And then dude, the part that always used to rub me the wrong way is that all sin is created equal. So yeah. if I covet in my brain, if I think of sex yep. 4 million times a day, yes, it's the same as murder. Yes. And so I always would walk around with this shame and guilt that I could never, I could never get past. And I always felt ashamed. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah. So after that, you're the mega pastor that we know. I love the man. I really yeah, do love yeah. the man. They just didn't have any answers. And so, um, in fact, here's what he told me. He said, uh, so backing up, you would, you would start to, because you're a very brilliant guy, you would start to think of those questions. Yeah. Ask for and an I answer. thought, I thought they're the expert because they're standing up there in front of 10,000 people, 20,000 people, right? Yeah. And so they, they must know something about that book I don't know. Right. So <clears throat> those were the questions, though. All of our hearts are that way. Because if you, if you go ask a, um, an atheist or an agnostic, they'll describe God perfectly to you mm -hmm. every time. Because, uh, in fact, this just happened at a Nuggets game. This girl was sitting next to me that has no idea who I am, right? Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, She's, she's doing her thing, having a lot of fun, talking openly about her life or, you know, da, 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 da. and then she's like, what do you do? And I just wanted to see the reaction. I go, oh, I do, I do business, but I'm also a pastor. And she goes, shut down. oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I said, did I look she offended like at all? Yeah, 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 totally. I said, did yeah. I look offended at all? And I said, the greatest compliment I ever get is like, I had no idea you were a Christian. Right, right. right. And I go, that's a compliment. Yes. That's a compliment. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't even know what we were talking about. We were just talking about, about so the questions you would ask. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I said that uh, she goes, "Well, I'm 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 an atheist." I go, "Yeah, I, I would be an atheist too if I was brought up with the God I was brought up uh. with." And I said, "But if you could believe in a God, describe it to me." And right now, because the culture and the times we live in, they always say some variation of this. They go, "Well, the God that I would have is He loves everybody." And for whatever reason, they always throw this in there. I think just because it's so much in our culture, they go, he would even love the gay and lesbian community. I go, you just described God perfectly. Right. Yeah, Gina, Gina, who's off camera. Yeah. If you don't mind me saying, grew up Catholic, and she's always had a tough time sort of, yeah, she, I mean, she had some really traumatic stuff happen. Yeah, with, my father was Catholic, mother Dutch Reformed. I know exactly what you're talking about. Don't no, right. And my kids don't either. And the, the greatest compliment that I, well, not the greatest compliment, the greatest uh, pleasure I have now is my kids still want to be around me. <laughs> because a lot of times if you're, if they come from a ministry background, the kids are like, I don't know anything about that, but they see two different lives. They see the, the public life where they're on stage and then they go see mom and dad behind and they go, it's totally different. They're totally different. <laughs> yeah. And you know me is that I've tried to be the same all, all the time. Yeah, yeah, you have. <laughs> right? And so, in fact, there's this thing called Holy Smokes where they were like, uh, it's these pastors that they, they go have scotch and a cigar, which I enjoy. And uh, they're like, hey, you know, you're in doing this. Would you like to come? And I go, where are you going to do it? They go, well, we do it secretly over in this place. So weird. <clears throat> and I go, bro, you lost me there. Yeah. I said, if you're willing to do it right downtown in front of your whole congregation, I'll do it with you. Right. Because they all want to do it. Right. And you're up there on stage acting like you're not doing it. And then we see you. So, yeah, it would be a couple questions like that. And they would go, we don't know. And then the, ma the major pastor. Or they would, Mike, in, in my experience, they would try to explain it away with just gobbledygook. Where you're like, dude, you're not making any sense. Like, so you're saying if I have a kid and I know there's a heroin trap outside. Or right. if I feed him little bits of heroin or I tempt him with, you know, he's going to fall apart. Yep. Why, why would God do that? And that he I would, I would always get these weird answers like, well, you can't know the heart of God. You can't understand his thoughts or feelings. And I'm like, that's yeah, but I'm reason. reading about it. Yeah, it yeah, looks like a total it. jerk. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and there's all this smiting and exactly. Sodom and Gomorrah and yeah. he, he seems mean. <laughs> like, and so, so I know because most of us, uh, most of us go, gosh, we've all had moments like that, that that should have happened to me. Right. 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 I go, how come it didn't happen to me? Right. Because it doesn't say that in the Greek and Hebrew. It's mistranslated. So you start, uh, so because, because one of the interesting questions I have for you is you, you've, you've crushed life, uh, you know. Um, it's interesting to me that you started seeking yeah. a different answer because it was pretty good for you, right? Yeah, but it was, here, well, here's the problem for me is, is I realized my success had nothing to do with what they were teaching me on Sunday morning. Mm. So then, then my question became, 
why are there billions of people following this? And the story is almost always the same. If they're, if they're cultural, religious, cultural Christians, cultural uh, Jews, cultural, where they don't really take it seriously, they're usually pretty okay. Mm -hmm. But we were challenged to read the Bible. You, you mean if they don't, if they're sort of like, uh, which would get made fun of, like picked on in church, like if you're just a pass through Christian. If you're, yeah, yeah, you're, you're kind of like, well, I show up on Easter and Christmas and mm -hmm. um, but I don't pay attention to anything right, else. I right. just go live my life. I go, they're usually okay. They're usually happier people. Yes, way happier. Yeah, yeah. So, but we were challenged to read the Bible, right? And I'm thankfully, I've, thankfully, or, or it's, a, it's a blessing and a curse in a way that, all right, if you give me that task. I, so, you know, the pastor, <clears throat> two weeks later, I come back and I had that thing read, highlighted, stickied, and I realized all the contradictions in it. Yeah. Even in, in, in the supposedly Greek where, you know, like red letters where this is Jesus talking supposedly, right? right? So you talking about explaining it away, literally three months ago, <clears throat> somebody was watching uh, from the biggest church in Colorado Springs. Yeah. He, uh, he's like, hey, man, I got I to ask this. is this. a pastor watching your stuff. Yes, okay. it happens all the time. And by the way, to give context, a mega pastor who has lots of influence, a yeah, humongous yeah, yeah. church. No, it's, it's happening all the time, these theologians, pastors. And so, because they're miserable. Yeah. They really are behind right. the scenes, right? And so Barb and, I, Barb and I would go, we feel pretty good about our life after meeting these guys. Right. Anyway, uh, but you're talking about explaining it away. So maybe two, mo two months ago, three months ago, he was sitting in my office and I, I showed him a couple scriptures where it's red letters, Jesus's words, and they directly contradict each other. Yeah. So I go, well, which is it? If this is the infallible word of God, which you're telling me it is, right. which one of these is incorrect? Because right. he directly contradicts, quote, we just explained it away, Mike. Wow. Wow. And that, I'm normally pretty calm. That makes my head explode. Uh, yeah, it makes me angry. Makes, yeah, because I'm like, you are hurting people sitting up there. Yeah. Teaching them this stuff. Destroying lives, yes. potentially. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So where do you think, uh, and then leading into sort of manifestation and, and power and living in your power. Yeah, yeah. Where do you think that? Where do you think for people like Gina and people who've had bad experiences? Where do you think the church is fundamentally broken? Uh, I think it's the source of the problems. A lot of times is the problem. And in fact, um, this is, we had this talk. I was saying this is the the difference between just my this the last two days with with my my Jewish friends that I'm in business with, mm. and we were having this conversation. I said, so here's here's Western Christianity's foundation. You were dirty at birth. Seriously, bro. Right. I remember one time the, the other pastor who caused me to have problems. <laughs> no. So quickly, cause I don't want to dovetail too much, yeah. but I had a riff with the church because our pastor went through some stuff and he got basically excommunicated yes. from his entire city. And I remember thinking if that was one of my rugby teammates who was doing meth and hooking up with dudes, we would, yeah, we'd intervene and try to help him, but we wouldn't kick him off. Exactly. So that's where my riff started. And I started reading like Rob Bell and some yeah. of these guys who think differently. Um, I remember that pastor one time giving a talk that at birth, we are assigned a demon. Yes. And that deep Gina's, I know it's, it's crazy. It's gobbledygook. It? It's crazy. And think about what that does to a young impressionable person. He goes, you're born with a demon. Satan assigns you a demon. And that demon is designed to torment you and take your soul and lead you into into basically a life of torment. Uh, yes, yes, yes. And I remember hearing that and I was reading, uh, yeah, it's crazy. I, yeah, How Satan, special. Satan, yeah. <laughs> Satan seems pretty cool, man. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, and I was reading a lot of John Brevere and I know you, I know, and, oh, and don't get me started. I know, bro. Yeah. And I was like, and, and I bought it hook, line and sinker. Yeah. So, so you're saying the, the, the current teaching is sort of saying you're, you're de defective at birth. Yeah. So Western, think about how crazy this sounds once you're out of it. And if, if you're, if you're still there, I'm not criticizing you at all. I just want you to sit back and analyze what you, you were taught to believe. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> God creates these two people, Right supposedly out of love, this God of love, infinite love, but he sets him up. And so he knows the end from the beginning, but here's what he's going to do. He's going to cause this snake that's ability to talk, go tempt a naked lady in a garden. And because she was tempted, the whole, 
all of creation is now screwed? Does that make sense to anybody? No, bro. And then they teach, the Bible literally says, women, you will now deal with birth pains, periods. Y- your life is basically a curse. And men, by the way, you will work so you got hard. two special demons. Yeah. <laughs> Men, you will work so hard that the sweat from your brow will basically water the crops, meaning you're, 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 you're destined for a life of just It's just hardship. horrible. And it's the exact opposite in the original Hebrew and Greek. The exact opposite. Here's what it said. Well, let me, let me finish the theology, yeah, yeah. right? Because Western theology, <clears throat> we were, were taught, hey, you're dirty at birth. Um, the, you know, if you get really crazy like that, like you're assigned a demon, or if you're special, you get a couple of them, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know it's just crazy, right? It's uh, <clears throat> and when you're really impressionable, as you know, up until about seven, where you're in that that theta state, where there's you're really just accept everything as real, mm. right? So mm. if they tell you, yeah, there's this story, Jonah, he jumped off and the fish ate him, and after three days it spit him out. You go, okay, never swimming again, right? <laughs> That's right. Nope. You just accept it, right? <laughs> yeah. And so I go, so the trauma of that is your heart knows you could never be separated from pure love. Um, you, your heart knows. The, every bit of your fiber knows that. But you're being taught that God now thinks you're dirty. And uh, there's a possibility, if you don't say these magic words, that you could be tortured forever. That's horrible, right? Yeah. Flip side. So I, my friend Brian, that we were talking about this, thing, he's Jewish. And I go, here's, here's the difference between... <clears throat> You, you're taught you're God's special people. Mm. You're so special. Anything you put your hand to shall prosper. You're going to run the banking systems. You're going to run the TV system. You're going to run the whole show because you're so special to Mm. me. Here was his answer. And I go, one works better. I mean, if you go look at it, is is, uh, uh, the Jewish people run most of the world because of that teaching right there. And we all have that capability. If we, what if we taught our kids that from this high? You are so special. You're God's special people. He's with you every step of the way. Anything you do will prosper. Even if you make a mistake, he'll make it work out for you. Because mm. that's what love does. Mm. Well, our programming's all messed and up. And here's what he said. He goes, well, duh. Any psychiatrist could figure that out. Right. I go, right, but religion can't. He understands it. Right. He's like, yeah, we teach our kids they're special. Right. I go, one works better than the other. Right? Yeah. So so how did this, so so you, you start to see this rift and you start to seek, how did you get to, to today? Like yeah. Where? yeah. So as I told you, as you know, my story too, you and I went on some of these trips together. Um, we tried to seek it out. I went to Africa to Bible study, you know, Bible school. It took my whole family. I'm like, Maybe the biggest church in the world knows the answer. They didn't have the answer. By the way, for those of you who aren't as ingrained in this as Mike and I, the biggest church, one of the biggest churches in Nigeria, Bishop Oyedipo, uh, you know, on Sundays alone, I think 100,000 people show up. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. His, his church campus yeah. is, you know. Massive. 50 square miles. It's, right. They have their own banks, their own businesses. They're, yeah, it's, it's a massive operation. And uh, same thing. So we get behind the veil, and I realize... Um, again, I love the man. If he ever hears this, whatever, right? Uh, he goes, Mike, I can't keep doing this. I'm so tired. So it was all out of human effort, mm. right? Mm-hmm. So he's a very charismatic guy. Most of the, I think most of the pastors of today should be business people. Mm. That was really their true skill set, right? Which like, is why they build big organizations. Yeah, because they could yeah, lead people. Yeah. They could be, they're entrepreneurial, da, 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 da. Um, <clears throat> So I realized they didn't have the answers. And uh, it was really kind of this is out of frustration I was like, well, God, I've gone to the biggest churches in the world that I know of. I've, I've, I've asked the same questions, and nobody has the answer. Mm. So I just logically thought, all right, based on our, our upbringing, the Holy Spirit knows everything, right? Yeah, I'm t- having this conversation mm. with myself. Is the Holy Spirit in me? Yes. Was the Holy Spirit of, around when they wrote these books we call the Bible now? Yes. All right, then Holy Spirit, I'm not reading another word of this damn book until you tell me what it's all about. Right. I'm not going to rely on an external source anymore. I'm going to go to the, the source. Yeah. <clears throat> about three weeks later, I'm in the shower, and it was, uh, it was, it was, it was kind of funny because it was like, check the furniture. And it's not an audible voice. Some people do, but, you know, people are like, I never want to come across as God told me. 
we all have these impressions where we're driving down the road and all of a sudden you get this. Yeah, yeah, someone just comes to you. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Well, what's that? That's God talking to you, right? It's not right, this mysterious right. thing. It's just, it's a, oops, sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> and so I was like, check the furniture. What is that all about? And he's like, it's the two covenants. If you go look at the imagery, there's the same furniture in the holy place as the holiest of holies. And then you start getting into the Greek and Hebrew, the pictographs, as we were talking about, is... Uh, um, like Genesis 1 has a left tough. It's uh-huh. used 11,050 times. If you go look it up in your Strong's, it says untranslatable. Uh-huh. Well, you're telling me the writers wrote that 11,050 times, twice as much as Yahweh because they didn't know what it was? R- right. Come on. Right. Right? Mike's, talking to, Mike's describing, if you read the Bible, there are, you can go look at the original Greek and Hebrew translations. Yeah, if you go to, like, uh, if you go to any source, it's called the interlinear. So they'll... In the Old Testament, Hebrew reads right to left. The original Greek people don't know for the first several hundred years was literally Hebrew. Right. It read right to left. <clears throat> we could, you know, if we ever do this again, we could actually show you that there's no no's or nots anywhere in Scripture. Now that changes everything. Right. It's it's uh. So that, that that's really where I started to go look at every letter in the Hebrew and the Greek, and I go, this is telling a story that's a hundred times better than what I was taught in Sunday school. Right. In fact, it's all about the magnificence of man that you have the ability, to, one, to create physically, right? Meaning we are all here, there's, there's four of us here, because there was intimacy between our, our father and our mother. Mm-hmm. And... <clears throat> I've always been fascinated by humanity, the fact that a, a sperm and, a, and an egg could come together and create this thing called life. Yeah, with a conscious. And Don't tell me it's fallen. Right. We're not fallen. That's right. God's magnificent creation, right? Right. Where they estimate now, nobody really knows the answer, but they estimate that every second, one 1,000, you have 80 trillion transactions in your brain. Don't tell me that Satan... We're, we're so magnificent. Right. And that's what scripture was talking about. They were talking about this. They would go, <clears throat> the, the first covenant would be the fact that uh, a man and a woman could have intimacy. And in 40 days, the embryo starts. In 40 weeks, she gives birth. And uh, I don't know if you have kids. Do you ever have kids? No? Okay. So, uh, but we, ladies, they'll understand this. A lady starts getting pregnant and they'll go, oh, how cute. She's showing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Which in Hebrew, they called that the showbread or the life that shows. But there is a manna from heaven, life that you create in the holiest of holies that doesn't show. Right. You can't see it. Right. And they, they, they translate it as no, and it literally means the cosmic womb of God. Stuff comes out of things that we can't see. Mm. So you're kind of, you're, you're sort of now going down the road of we can create any any reality that we it's want. It's talking about two covenants. First one is with a man and a woman, uh-huh. which is holy, it says. To them, they were going, that's magnificent. This, this life, <laughs> this new life is created out of this woman. Right. Was proof to them that God's in them. Right. Because they didn't do it. That it's a miracle. It's a miracle. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> and so the other miracle was, uh, it literally scripture says this. It says God covers... It says the man covers the woman. Males cover female. Well, that's talking about intimacy. Right. But when they treat it literally, um, the more religious they are, the ladies have to be covered because then there's a scripture that says, but God covers man. But in Greek, it says anthropos, and it says God covers the man and the woman. Meaning this is, hey, first creation happens when a, when a male has intimacy with a female. Second covenant creation happens when God has intimacy with mankind. Just And they were using imagery, the fact that you could have intimacy and form everything you want out of pleasure. Not hard work, stress, life is hard, money doesn't grow on trees, you know. Yeah. Intimacy is pleasurable. And that pleasurable act created life. Right. There's no negative in the whole thing. So just as powerful as that creation of life happens, God covers you. He has intimacy with you. And so you can create in the holiest of holies between these two cherubs, which we call our cerebrum, cherubim, cerebrum, Uh, right? Yeah. Is this little gland called pineal, the penis of the mind. Yeah. It's a little pine cone that secretes a milky white substance that activates all the other glands and you feel euphoric and you create anything you want. Mm. So let's talk about that. So you know, wild. It's crazy. But that's what it's about. I no, know because it, before the show even started, Mike and I were talking about. <laughs> it's heavy stuff, but that's what the Bible's <clears throat> talking about. 
Yeah. Um, and I'm going to get hate mail, I know, because they're so... I said, just sit back and think about what you believe for a minute, right? Yeah, no, and I'd love to talk about that. It, it, yeah. it does become like a cult, and we feel it is... It's it, very cultish. And it causes trauma. I mean, uh, we, so we were talking about trauma. How do I segue mm. this? We were talking about trauma and how, how it... How do we get out of it? Well, no, how, how it translates generations. And yeah. I was bringing up something with Mike, you know... Um, we had some rough times at Fit Soda. Yeah. And because of that, I started to get pretty toxic. Yeah. Um, really toxic. I'm shocked these two haven't made a couple jokes. <laughs> I'm still repairing my relationship with both of them. <laughs> well, if it, if it makes you feel any better, I've, I've known him longer than all of you and I'm still here. So it's probably worth it. He's a good dude. Um, right? So, yeah. but I got caught in, I got sure. caught in, um, you said something in a, in a talk on your YouTube channel, which we will put in the description of this podcast. Uh, go check out Mike's talks. They're absolutely phenomenal. In fact, one of your talks really re helped me start thinking how I was thinking about things. Yeah. You said, and even in prayer, we're, we're thinking of the problem and not, yeah. And sort of not surrendering, which by the way, Matt also gave me a book that I finally read that's changed the way I think it, it's called surrender. Oh yeah. 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 It's unbelievable. Yeah. I've read it. I've got both I've, singers book. Yeah. 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 No, it's great. Fantastic. It changed my paradigm yeah. and Matt tried to reach me and I, I was like being a dick and I was yeah. like, whatever <laughs> life is you force life into being right, like right. whatever. But one of the things that happened at fit soda is I got caught in solving problems. Yes. And my, my orient, my brain got orientated to, okay, we're running out of money. How do we pay payroll? Well, that right. became a problem that I had to focus on. Uh, it, you know, personnel problems, production problems. So every, it felt like every day when we came to work, it was a problem, which yeah. I know now was reprogramming yes. my brain. Yes. So talk about, so you said something crazy before we even, not crazy, something crazy cool. Cause I was like, well, Mike, how do you, cause there has to be work involved. There has to be. And that's my, that's my limited right. belief. Right? right. And you were like, no, I think you could sit in a room and manifest. I do anything you want. I do. If we, if we truly have the spirit of God in us, which I believe we do, we, like I said, I, that's just my habit. You could call it the universe, life source. I don't care what you call it. We're all trying to describe the same thing that none of us can really explain why it works. We can just explain that it so works. So would you say real quick for beginners, like someone hearing this, yeah. and maybe, I don't know how these two feel, but maybe they're, maybe they're still hesitant with God. Yeah. How do they tap into this way of thinking without... Yeah. I, and I'm not trying to subvert God. I'm just wondering... Yeah, it's um, if you didn't go if you didn't grow up with any religious context, it would be very normal for you, right? <clears throat> um, but people become like the god they're taught about in the god they worship. So mm. if they think God's judgmental and makes you work hard, then you think you have to work hard. But so maybe if it works for you, call it the universe for yeah, now. Yeah, call it the universe. Call it call it Energy. life source. Call it uh, call it her. I don't really care. Yeah, you yeah. Know, I use him because that's just habit, guys. I. I I don't yeah, believe yeah. God's a male, right? I right. Don't, I, <laughs> right. That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It, which is a whole other story where you go, if God really had Adam and Eve, how's the next generation work? Right. You we're, got a brother looking at his sister going, I either got you or my mom. <laughs> we're all related. That's sick, right? It is like weird. it's really sick. It's weird. So you said, so let's talk about manifesting. Yeah. Uh, Walk me through it in your world. Yeah, yeah. So here's 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 the really fascinating part is um, <clears throat> I think everybody intuitively knows whether they describe it or not that we're all connected to this thing that is the source of all life, right? Like mm -hmm. We live in this beautiful state, Colorado, and Gina was talking about Huntington Beach and it's snowing today. So I and I just got back from Boca Raton, so I'm like maybe Colorado right now is not fun. But anyway, if you look out your window. Does the sun come up perfectly tomorrow? Yes. Are all the planets running into each other or is there harmony? There's harmony. It, see, that was always fascinating to me from my scientific background going, it is so crazy that we can send a rocket ship stationed in, whether it's Florida or Russia where it's launched. And I don't even know what, I don't even know what these crafts are doing in space, but when they connect, like the space um, capsule, right? Or whatever they call it. Mm -hmm. uh, um, like my, the fact that you can send this stationary object, the world is such harmony, so precise that we can 
send this thing. I don't know how many times it orbits the Earth in a day, but it's moving. Yeah. And we can send something times. stationary where it has to break, break gravitational forces and yet come up so gently and touch that thing so it doesn't kick it out of orbit. Right. I go, there is harmony in the world. There's, the world works on basic principles that can't be changed. We used to talk about in Matthew, it says the wildflower grows without labor or toil. Nature grows yes. perfectly in unity. It, it all works. There's no struggle. Like if you could talk to a wildflower, it wouldn't be like, dude, I'm working this eight to five job. I, it's just beautiful. You're, you're onto something really hot right there. Yeah. Because I've always said that. I was like, so I, I grew up, my mother was 100% Dutch. So tulips and the whole Dutch scene, right? So I love tulips today. Yeah. I go, but the fact that I can take this bulb that looks like it's nothing and somehow put it into the ground, and it, there's a life source, a creative energy, power, whatever you want to call it to that, that takes everything it needs from its surroundings. That bulb is not struggling to be a tulip. Right. It is a tulip. Right. Right? It just is. It just is. It doesn't struggle to be a tulip. It doesn't, it doesn't have weird things like money doesn't grow on trees, you know? <laughs> it realizes everything I'm ever going to need for life has already been supplied. Yeah. And it just becomes a tulip. It creates these beautiful stalks and these beautiful colors, which has a pistis in the stamen. If you remember biology, like it self pollinates. Life is in the life of itself. Yeah. Endless life is within that. Yeah. So, okay. So let's take, um, let's take someone, uh, like an example. Yeah. <clears throat> um, we, we can talk about any of those big three, right? The health, yeah. finances, or love. I do want to get to worth too. No, I'd love yeah. an example from you. So like, um, let's say Matt, Matt wants to make 10 grand a month yeah. or he wants, he wants to make games work yes. with us. Yes. He wants certain things. Yes. But there may be blockages in his brain of there's the only, the only thing that limits all of us is I'm blockages. not saying there is Matt. I'm just, no, that that's, it's no, fair. No. Like when, when we Sorry, realize bro. we're truly unlimited, the only thing that's limiting us is ourselves beliefs that we picked up probably by, from our teachers, parents, coaches, grade school yeah, usually dude, by the, the seven the you're pretty programmed programming is yes. crazy the From great kindergarten news, yes like you you didn't make the team you're this you, you're yes. always being put in a box you're you're constantly right. uh being manipulated so yeah what would you coach so here, someone yeah. like like yeah perfect so here's what i would do is i, I would go uh and i make my kids do this actually um in fact uh, people think i'm crazy but like you know you need to make your kids work hard my kids were we're working hard. And so I actually paid them to stop working because I said, you're, you're learning bad habits. <laughs> wow. Did you guys hear that just now? That's amazing. And now parents will scream <laughs> at me amazing. like, you're teaching them like, no, I'm teaching them who they are. They're divinely designed and they can create. Mm. So I just asked them, I said, how much are you making over there? And they told me, I said, what if I paid you? But here's, here's what you need to do. You need to go through some books with me and spend time with me. But I'll pay you what you're making. So there was some give and take. <laughs> Yeah, but it, but was really what I needed to do is what I'm going to teach is I need to get them screwed on right, mm. right. Even though they grew up with us, they watched mom and dad. Like, you don't go out. Yeah, you don't work. Right. Why do I have to work so hard? Yeah, <laughs> and, and uh, so here's what I would do. It's like literally, it's almost this simple. You get a piece of paper, and uh, you go, okay, what's my goal? Let's say it's ten thousand dollars a month, effortless. Yeah. Where, um. Why do we all, almost everybody wants to go buy a lottery ticket sometime in their life. Right. Because it's the, what if? Well, you know what it's doing is your natural, the true divinity in you is trying to express itself like, you don't have to bust your ass so hard. What if you won the, the whatever it's called, the Powerball, and they gave you $360 million up front? You probably don't do what you're going to do tomorrow necessarily right. to make money. Right. That's in all of us. We know we don't have to do it intuitively. Right. So I would go, here's my goal. It's $10,000 every month. The other side of the paper would be this, Maddie, is, or anybody listening to this, is if that was true, if I knew that all of my prayers are, would be answered, and remember, we're talking to God here or the universe, the source of that infinite that power, creates yeah. everything. Remember, it's, this is God. So is it a heart? It's a big deal for God to give you $10,000. <laughs> Oh, it's stupid, right? Right. But, but we don't think that way right? because we think we're separated from God. Right. And he's like, no, I'm in you, through you, all around you. And the most fascinating thing is I respond to what you think and how you feel. Mm. The world mirrors us. So the other half of that side is $10,000. <clears> or here's, an, here's one for some of you guys that I think would be great for a lot of you. 
which is why we have shows like this is who wants to be a millionaire and all this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Well, everybody does. If they really, yeah, like, well, why wouldn't be I? honest? Yes, yeah, you do. yeah, yeah. When yeah. I was a little kid, they had this. Uh, I grew up really and poor. And there's nothing wrong with it, by the way. No, no. It's fantastic, right? <laughs> yeah. It's fantastic. Be rich. Yeah. You, it would, hey, a lot of us dream of being part of the Lucky Sperm Club, right? Like, <laughs> I was born with that name and I have yeah, this trust yeah, fund, yeah. right? Um, and so uh, I remember watching cartoons when I was little called Richie Rich. And, I, yeah. and they, you know, they would show this kid who grew up really rich with this trust fund. Yeah. And I remember like, that would just be the best. <sighs> That's what you're after, Maddie. If I had that, what would I do? And it would probably be the things that you love. I love music. I love producing. I love creating, right? Yeah. <laughs> so when you, when you see that goal, it's really getting out of this analytical mind because that's where it's stopping you, these belief systems that we have. Uh -huh. Well, you got to do something. Or I don't have the right degree. Or uh, I got married and divorced young. Now I have, you know, whatever, whatever mistakes. I got pregnant young, ladies. Or I went to prison. I'm working with a couple of prison ministries right now. I go, if you don't understand the power you have, right. as you can start to see yourself outside of that, and in ways we don't know, you'll get out of prison. Right. You'll get a pardon. Something will happen. You don't have to worry about it. Right. So if you spent some time where we call it getting just altered state a little bit, where you're, you can shut down your, how your brain works. When you get into alpha and theta, it's just the lowering of your brain. The easiest way is to breathe. And oh all, man, I want to go off on this. All, no, it's fantastic. All we know it intuitively, right? Yeah. Is is when you're a little kid and you you hurt yourself, what does mom do? Hey, 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 you're okay. Take a deep breath. <sighs> mm. Everything settles down in you. When you if you do some deep breathing, I know you get into alpha even if you don't think you're into alpha. Mm. Right? So stated another way, sort of in a meditative. You're, yes, you're getting out of I'm worried about everything. I'm trying to figure it out. How am I going to make 10,000 bucks? You own that, those programs are telling you, well, I need to go get a side job or I need to go do this or I need to go that. You're tapped into God, guys. God can give it to you any way he wants that's best for Maddie. Right. Right? Right. And it'll be in a way that is pleasurable to you because creation comes out of pleasure. Mm. Almost exact opposite of what religion teaches. Right. 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 So, so, so when you spend time like that, it would be this, Matt. Um, here's what I did when I built our first business. This is, I don't know, we're on camera, right? Yeah. So I remember we were in this business and they're like, it was like a pipeline. If you're in sales or anything like that, you got to do this, this much work and this will end sure. up the result. Sure. Well, there's people that do that work and it doesn't work. What's going on. Right. 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 <clears throat> so I remember being frustrated and I go, this isn't how I did anything in my life. I did anything in my life. If I thought, man, I'd like to have that. It would start to happen to me. Right. That simple. So my wife, Barb, she finds this, uh, she finds this picture of a cup of coffee out of a magazine. You know, some of these young people like, yes, they still yeah, exist. Yeah. But, <laughs> um, and it said, imagine a stress-free day. And it was a picture of a cup of coffee on a saucer with a spoon, and there was steam rising out of it. Like, that's what I'm after. I want the emotion that that creates, because energy in motion is emotion, right? So, and here's what's really fascinating is, when you were in that state of, of that, uh, this $10,000 a month, you'll be drawn right to it. Mm. It'll, if all 7 billion people in the world need to rearrange to make that happen specifically for Maddie, it'll happen. Right. So for me, I'm, I'm driving to work, you know, I'm, I'm an engineer, my wife's an engineer, and I, I sit down in my cube. <laughs> it's just so asinine when I think about it, right? It's weird to think of you in a cube. No, that's dude. like my kids would be like, oh, dad will tear stuff up. So, uh, and people would make fun of it because they'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, Mike's going to be free. You know, he thinks he doesn't have to have a job. And so I would, for the first five minutes, you're stressed. If it's snowing, right? We were talking about that. You're sliding to work. People are telling you you're number one, the whole deal, right? And you're going, I hate this thing. I can't wait till I retire. That's people's life. But right there, you're already you're already manifesting more of that problem. Exactly right? right. So I would, I'd calm myself down, do some breathing. I would take a look at that picture and I'd close my eyes. And I would, I would really just try see myself and feel what it would feel like. I'd go, I would try smell the coffee. I'm, I'm sitting stationary, but I'm using my imagination to smell the coffee. And like when you feel a nice warm cup of coffee when it's snowing outside, how good that feels. And you smell that. Oh, that coffee smells amazing to me. It's just those good feelings, right? That good energy. <clears throat> and I would picture myself looking over at Barb and go, 
it had to be 9 a.m. because that meant I didn't rush off to work, right, alarm, anything right. else, right? Like that. And go, hey, babe, what do you want to do today? And my business started to explode. My heart took me right to the end result if I focused on the end result. Mm. So the same thing, the $10,000, if you, if you pay attention to the emotions of where's it going to come from, you get more of where's it going to come from. If you go, the gratitude of having it, if you understand that God is pure love, and the lo- I believe God is pure love. The universe is pure love, whatever language yeah, you yeah. want to use, right? I go, come on. That's such harmony that those, those tulips bloom and everything's effortless out there, right? And elk, there's elk that run through our yard. I go, the elk don't need to be taught to be elk. Right, right. We're supposed to be human beings, not human doings. We're supposed to just be who we want to be. Right. But we've been taught, yeah, but you got to go to school and then go do. So one thing I think you're teaching that I don't think people get, and it took me 40 years to figure out, it's what I think was part of what created some of the drama at Fitzoda was <clears throat> it got so intense for us and uh, that it was creating such an intense emotion. Yeah. Stressful. That I wasn't, I didn't recognize it was the emotion. So in this example, you're saying, Maddie, write down what you want and start to believe that the world will give you what you want. Yes, yeah. you probably still have to have an income and sure. you, still have to, you still have to work and you still have to do things. But what you're saying, and I think people miss is, and, I, and, I, and I'd love to get your opinion on this, is like the work is seeing what you want and creating an emotion around Feeling that. Feeling it, yes. The prayer is the feeling. And that's where people miss it is, yeah. is Tony Robbins does talk about that where he's like, create a state. Yeah. Uh, however you do that. Now yeah. for some people it's breathing and calming down for me, it's music and yeah. emotion. Great. Anything that calms your analytical mind down, but yeah. where the work comes in, because I think people will hear this and go, they'll go write down 10,000 and then go on with their life. Yes. Right. And then they'll, they'll even put it on a, on a vision board <laughs> and you walk by it all the time, but you're not putting the emotion into sitting in a room like, and, and this is crazy to think that your whole life could change if you put down the things you want and every night before bed, yep. you spent 10 minutes emotionally feeling it, feeling, feeling what having it feels those like. things. Yes. And that's the work, right? Yeah. Yeah. You, you're experiencing the pleasure of already having it. That's how you create, right? So you have to figure out a way to get your mind to stop spinning because we're, see the, the presence of God in us, the universe, whatever, does it have all the answers? Of course it does. So when our mind's telling us I, we don't have the answers, I can't, I got to figure this out, you naturally start to get stressed. Your head and your heart are not coherent. And then what happens is you don't check the emotion. Yes. So your whole day. And it takes you on a journey you don't want to go. In fact, one of my favorite sayings is Mark Twain, where he says, I've, I've experienced some terrible things in my life. Some of them actually happened. <laughs> Meaning he imagined most of the bad things that never even happened in his life. We all do. 100%. So what's a practical tip for, because actually your talk helped me re, re yeah. understand that I was letting emotion yeah. dictate things because I thought I could do everything in my, myself. Yeah. Another problem that I have. <clears throat> yeah. If I'm starting to feel stressed and I recognize the emotion without going into a full meditation or whatever, because yeah. I think sometimes people hear meditation and they're like, dude, I'm not going to. No, you can do it in five minutes. So let's say I'm feeling stressed. Uh, Maddie gets a stimulus in his life where he's like, ooh, taxes or, yeah. or Gina feels some pressure. How do you- A how do bill you s- comes up that you don't have the money for. Yeah. How do, you, how do you yeah. stop that emotion in its tracks Yeah, and, and redirect good emotion into what yeah. you want? First, first, you realize it's only energy. It's a feeling. The real you is infinite. It's limitless. It's the spirit of God, whatever you want to call it, right? So it's, it's a, to recognize- it's pretty easy, actually. Um, negative feelings don't feel good. Fear, worry, anxiousness, lack of money, lack of health, lack of love don't feel good. Mm. We're designed to recognize, oh, I've picked up a belief that doesn't, isn't true about me because it feels bad. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Whereas if, you're, if, uh, if all, the, all the, the elevated emotions, love, bliss, in love with life, um, I feel limitless. I feel like I could do anything, feel great. They're yeah. euphoric. It's pleasurable. Second covenant. You create out of pleasure. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. If, if, in, if first covenant intimacy was worry, anxiousness, fear, we'd stay away from it. But God designed it in a way that every human enjoys it. Right. Right? Right. 
So in that moment, you're feeling anxious. Yeah. Bill comes. What- first, first thing you do is recognize I'm starting to feel anxious, which isn't the truth about me. Follow me? Mm-hmm. First is just awareness, whatever you want to call it. Right. Go, I realize I'm stressing and this isn't helping. Right. Right? Right. I can go off. now, I've, And I just express myself, which is most talk therapy. Hey, talk this out. Right. The problem is you never get rid of the root. You express some of that negative energy, you feel better. Oh, I feel so much better talking to you. Yeah, but it's going to show up tomorrow again because it's still part of you. Right. So <clears throat> recognize that it's there and then go, oh, I realize that that is just a, I'm experiencing a negative emotion right now. If I calm myself down, what's really fascinating is if you breathe or music where you get, it actually shuts part, part of your brain down called the limbic brain, which allows you to experience pain, fear, anxiousness, et cetera. You're now right into the program mode of like you're in the software. When you're in that alpha and theta, you can tell yourself anything you want. Yeah. So you, you, you stop the part that's causing you to worry, fear, anxiousness. You get your body calmed down. You go, it feels so awesome that money flows to me in avalanches of abundance. I always have enough. Just as you were one to seven again, if you were taught there's a trust fund. <laughs> You, Dude, you never have to worry about money. It's mind blowing because not only your talk, but someone on Joe Rogan, a psychologist was saying the same thing and it was blowing Joe Rogan's mind because in that moment of stress, what you end up doing is not only a, cause we there's one of the most important things that again, you retaught me was a, the emotion is creating your world. Yes. So the stress happens, emotion <laughs> goes and you keep thinking of the problem, yep. which is why it keeps showing up yes. instead of stopping, recognizing the emotion redirecting that energy yep. and no, nobody does that. Yeah. Well, people that understand it do, but sure. the masses don't. You're right. Correct. We're taught not to. We're taught the exact opposite. Cause we think we have to problem solve it. Yes. Yes. And if you, if you really, here's what's fascinating. God designed this so beautifully that when we pay attention to anything, it starts to become in our physical world. Mm. We take it from an infinite Sickness, possibility. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I mean, people that, people that, try to be healthy usually end up manifesting some disease bro almost I can, all I can, the time i can tell you the, the more i've chased freedom yes the less i get of it people Instead laugh of, at me they go you gonna eat that i go yeah i'll eat yours too <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and i'm never sick my kids have never been to a dentist or a doctor in their life yeah and they're like well why i go not because we're weird because they're not sick right because they're not constantly we don't talk about it yeah we don't have, when there's not one time where we ever said, don't eat that or don't do that because that causes X. It should, when people hear this though, it's, that's the, in my opinion, we just unlocked one of the secrets to life is check, it is the secret to life. Understand that you have an emotion and it is driven by prehistoric DNA and programming. Like, yes, there were saber tooth tigers, you know, that anxious emotion helped us survive. But if you can learn to, if you can learn that emotion is driving your world <clears throat> Yeah. And that emotion is detracting energy. Cause you and I could go on for three hours about what we talked about before the show. Yeah. Yeah. Adams being split energy, yes. how it, how it, yes. how it radiates again, a, a real world example. It fits out of my energy almost ruined the whole company. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, and it was, that's just one well, person, but it's, here's, what's cool is now that you understand that you can go create anything you want. Yeah. Because that should fire people. It up, should like, fire people up where but it does yes. take work. So the work is, <clears throat> recognize emotion. Are you at in life where you want to be? Yeah. The work is spending quiet time, getting your mind calmed down, which we don't do. That's yeah. another reason why people are so, in my opinion, <laughs> right. I'd love to know what you think. I also want to talk about, you said loving your problems in a talk, which I can't Ooh, wait yeah. to talk about. Yeah. Cause love is the acceptance of all things, right? This is Michael Singer. Now, like you're talking, right? That when you said yeah. that blew my mind. Yeah. Uh, so what we do do is we fill, we fill the anxiousness with more technology. We, we, yeah. we fill it with none of us ever sit and yeah. in quiet ever and check in ever with ourselves. And it doesn't even have to be quiet, like verbally quiet. Um, like you could, some people, like we were talking about Motley Crue, you could, if you love Motley Crue, you could put headphones on, listen to Motley Crue and you go into alpha because mm. you're, 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 your mind's not on the problem anymore. You're enjoying music. Yeah. And your, your, your body and your mind start to calm down. They go, okay, we're not in stress mode. We're not trying to figure out a problem. Once you understand that we're the, we're the life source or the energy of that material thing, when you take your energy out of it, the problem naturally dissolves by itself, mm. which is all love is. 
So if I go, if there's something negative to come, <clears throat> bad news, health, money, love. Yeah. Somebody left me. They, I, I got an IRS bill I can't pay, whatever. We were just using those examples. Right. right. If you go, wait a minute, is love is the acceptance of all things. Love, love doesn't go, I hate this. Right? Oh, this is horrible. So you're segueing into love your problems. Yeah. So it, the problem's only there if we give it energy, right? Does God really have a problem? No. No. And he's like, how do you, how you do have you, access to me? <laughs> Mike, I'm not, I'm, right? not, I'm not saying this because I'm arguing with you, but if right. someone's listening and they're like, yeah, but now you sound like you're, you're just deferring shit. Like you're not, yeah. you're not really, um, old broken Chris would have heard this and be like, that's fucking gobbledygook. Like, <laughs> no, like you're you just kind of watched me though. No. Right. Yo. Yeah, bro. No. Yeah. Um, I recognize that I was wrong. Yeah. Uh, someone who's listening to this, who might be a little bit more rigid might go, ah, yeah, but it sounds like you're avoiding shit. Like, no, no. Yeah. What I'm doing is I'm tapping into a, uh, I'm tapping in to the source that knows all the answers, right? All knowing this. So you're not, it's not like you're avoiding like, okay. I just realized I can tap into something that's way bigger than me that has more power than me and more knowledge than me. You're surrendering. Yes. So, so, yes. But so, so to restate, you're not, yeah. you're not saying like Maddie gets a tax bill. Gina got a tax bill. Yeah. I get one. And, and you're not saying you're not, you you recognize it. It's real. Yes. It will have to be dealt with. I check my emotion of, of how do I feel right now about that? Yes. Right. Okay. So let's say I get a tax bill and I don't have the money physically. Right. My reaction to that is what I pay attention to. Mm. Right. Just like the tulip bulb. Is everything there? That's it right there. That's what I'm looking for. It's like, yeah, you have a choice how to react to that. So if I'm recognizing that that's stressing me out, right? Oh, okay. So here's what I need to do. I like to just breathe because I know I know it works. I don't know why it works, but that's how we're designed. If we breathe, we get into, we, you will get into that alpha state where you can now just go, I'm going to trust a love and an ability way bigger than me. It keeps... It keeps all the planets in orbit. I'm pretty sure it can figure out how to pay this tax bill. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The tax bill is not a thing to the... <laughs> right. It's, right. It's, it's not a thing. Right. Right? I go, that same energy is causing the sun to come up tomorrow morning. I'm pretty sure it can handle this. Right. So I'm tapping into what would it feel like if I knew there was a love greater than me that loves me so much and wants nothing more for me than to take care of me. And right there, you're attracting better energy. You're That's just it. attracting. That's all it is. So it is being dealt with. You're dealing with it in a way that is attracting good versus bad. I'm, if there's a way to do it in your own strength, it takes a long time. Or there's a dude to tap into God and he can do it in no time. Which is, which is the, that book, Surrender. And, you know, I've been learning it for a long time. And I, I, again, I, I owe Maddie a lot for <laughs> giving me that book. Yeah. He was trying to tell me something. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. No, it's um, a fantastic book, right? It's, dude, it, I, yeah. there was parts where I was like screaming at the author. I was like, dude, <laughs> you let someone build a property, a, a house on your property. You, you, come on, bro. Like, it sounds crazy. It's, it does. Right. Um, but when you realize that if you, if you took away all of our, our wrong beliefs, everything would go into harmony. But he did it. Yeah, bro. And he did exactly what you're talking about. He surrendered. He, he was constantly manifesting yes. in meditation. Yes. He even admits he took that a little too far, but like he was doing exactly what you're talking about. So this, this idea next, I think is, is really big and uh, we can stop at one if you need to. No, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. I, I just, I was just checking my phone to make sure that we're good. Okay. So this Mike said this on a talk guys. And I, I was excited for you guys to hear this just because of the, all the trauma we went through building a beverage company in the last two years, <laughs> all the problems that we face together as a team in this room. I'm listening to one of Mike's talks last night and he goes, you have to love your problems. Yeah. And I was like, wait, I rewound it. Listen to it. Did he say that? Right. Yeah. Right. Did he really say that? And you got into it and you said, okay, big problem happens. I'm going to choose to love that problem unconditionally. Yeah. Yes. And then watch what happens. Can you explain? Yeah. Love yeah. your problems. Um, and this is what's fascinating. Cause we'll, cause, sorry. Cause yeah. we'll get around and talk about them and then go, can you believe this fucking guy? And, yeah. you, and you like, you ruminate in, <laughs> right, right. in stuff. And I think some of us are just trying to process, but yeah. what ends up happening is you create more energy in the problem. 
Yeah. And I am so guilty of that. No, we all are. So, so I'm not guilty. saying I'm a pro. Yeah. I'm pretty good at it, but I, I have my moments, right? Right. So it makes me want to go play rugby again. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so love your problems. Yeah. So love is a very different energy when you understand that love is the acceptance of all things. So it's, it's going to accept that as if that's okay. So I've taken all the negative energy out. If I'm going, where am I, how am I going to pay this bill? I can't believe this person did this to me. I can't believe my mom and dad did this to me. I can't believe my ex-spouse did this to me. I can't believe the government did this to me. I, I can't believe the, the Muslims did this to me. I can't believe the Christians did this to me. Right. It's always division. Right, right. Right. I can't believe the Democrats did this to me. I can't believe the Republicans did this to me. There's always this outside source where if we're truly one and, and the world is built in harmony, which I believe it is, is when we go, oh, this is okay. What is, what is in me? What energy is in me that's causing this to, to appear in my life? The reason that that thing, that problem that we call problems appearing in my life is so I can be free from it forever because true love wants to get rid of the problem. So by me going, this sucks. Uh, I can't believe this is happening. I'm holding on to the problem. Mm. Follow me? Yeah. That energy will hold it to me. If I go, oh, this problem's showing up in my life so I can be free from it forever. Because it's not going to show up until I'm ready to let it go. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So as soon as I'm ready to love it, go, oh, you know what? I see you there. The real me is limitless and infinite. It's pure love. It's pure harmony. It's the presence of God. That, the real me is not concerned about that problem. I'm going to just accept it as it is and love it. All the energy goes away. Here's the really cool part, scientifically, is it takes with it years and years and thousands and thousands of thoughts if you allow that to love that feeling that you're having about that problem, uh -huh. it takes all that garbage away. All the trauma in your life goes away very fast. Mm. Like you don't have to live with trauma. You can, I don't care. You know, if I, I like Dispenza a lot because I like the science about it, right? Do uh -huh. Dispenza. And everybody thinks their problem's different. Well, you don't know what my dad did to me. He sexually molested me or whatever, right? Sure, sure. And so I know those are terrible things, right? And so... But that happened 10 years ago. That happened 15 years ago. You're, when, you're, when you're dealing with any problem, whether it was trauma from the past or if you're worried about something that happened, when are you experiencing it? Right now. Right. So all you have is now, right? Right. What I choose to do now actually heals the past and creates a blueprint for my future. So if I love that problem, all of those negative beliefs, those limiting beliefs release out of my body and I'm pureness now. So, so walk me through, let's say somebody gets into an, an accident <clears throat> yeah. and they're, and they're, it really messed them up and they have yeah. some PTSD yep. and, oh, they, yeah. and they're, and they're, you know, struggling with it. How do they use this principle to, yeah. to heal? Yeah. It's a, it's fascinating because it's the reason they have PTSD is something that was very traumatic. The, the more emotional, like if, if, if something, they see something or something happened to them that really like somebody somebody died them. in that yes accident. Yeah. yes when do they continue to experience it that may have happened a year ago but they're still experiencing the trauma of it right mm -hmm. so if they realize what is the feeling i have when i think of that see the end product of of uh of a, an experience is how we feel about it right if, if we took all the emotion out i'm pretty sure most people understand they're all going to die Right. That just happened to be a, a thing that we've labeled as really bad, that accident. Uh -huh. Right? Yeah. That was just the way that they happened to die. There's really not much more to it than that. Right. If we, if we got out of the way and go, sure. why am I assigning that feeling that that was horrible to it? Right. So if I can recognize that uh, um, when there's something really traumatic that happens, we create this really strong neural networks where we can experience it over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And over. Just as powerful, though, when we go, you know what? I realize I'm struggling from that accident, and it's affecting me today. Yeah. How would I feel if I was free from that forever? They'll naturally exhale. They'll go, oh, that would be amazing. Mm. Right? So if you can teach them basically to get out of their analytical mind, do some breathing, what would it feel like where you knew you were free from that forever, where everything was okay in your life? Yeah. That's how you do it. Because the longer you stay in that, that experience of everything's okay and my mind is off that, you actually shut that part of your brain down that experiences that. Mm. So this goes back to you have to do, you have to do the work. Yeah, yeah. And the work is pleasurable. 
you know, it's like uh, if the reason the reason these Disney movies like uh, uh, what do you call it the Huge like the, the 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 lamp right or the yeah, genies yeah, yeah, right yeah. because we know that's kind of true. Like, what if you had a genie where all your wishes were fulfilled? Well, you would go. Little kids can do it. Like, hey, if you had an unlimited budget and you could go anywhere, do anything. Dubai. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. You could have anything. Yeah, Dubai. They have no problem just, oh, I would do this and I'd do this and do yeah. this. As you, as you get a little older, I'm being slow. Yeah. That's not who I am. Right. Right? I don't mean that offensively at all. No, no, no. So, so all of this comes back to you, you, have, to, you have to do the work. You have yeah. to do the mental. And all it is is letting go of the wrong beliefs. That's it. Right. But you have to spend time in the good emotion and the good belief. Yeah. And that's where, yeah. that's really where I'm trying to get to the practical part of it. That's Some, it. That's it. If you, like, if I, if I could do anything, I would go get out a pen, um, design your life. What does your love life look like? How much abundance do you have? Where would you travel? Who would you be with? Most True. people have never even done that. No. Yeah. That's geez, I, I, If I'm, I can't sit around for a couple of weeks. I got to go do something. Right. Right. Cause I like it. Yeah. So if you really, if you knew that you were limited, unlimited, you would, you would probably live differently. Right. 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 So it's really that, that if you knew you could have anything and it's not a big deal for God, what emotion does that invoke? Cause our, our true, our true being is we're, we're limit, we're limitless beings. Yeah. Right. Meaning we can do anything at any time with anyone. Mm. And they teach this, Mike, this is, um, they teach this to athletes, you know, athletes who, and you're seeing it more and more become prominent, even in the UFC, because those guys are, Gina and I know we spent, and Matt knows, we spent enough time with the UFC guys. Oh, they yeah. are, they're, oh. you're morons. Um, no, but they're, 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 it's, it's evolved athletes, right? Like yeah. they teach athletes before the game, if you sit and meditate, on the outcome that you want. Exactly. And you feel it. Yep. And Tony Robbins has been teaching this for a long time too. And if you, and, and if you look at the outcome, so like he has priming in the, in the beginning of the day and he, you know, sit there, think of the outcome of the day, feel it in your emotion and it will, it'll happen. Yeah. And here's a little practical tip too. Some people go, I'm not good at visualizing. Well, yes, you are that you were just telling you that story. <laughs> You're um, doing it all day yeah, long. Yeah. yeah. So if I go, I've got a white coffee cup, um, or if you read, if you're in a book and it says he grabbed a white coffee cup, you, your brain doesn't go W H I T E space C O F F E E space. You see the image. You see the image. Yeah, so talk yeah. to yourself. Talk to yourself. Just go. It feels so amazing that I have this life where I'm blown away that I could make ten thousand dollars a month easier than I ever thought. Now guess what? You're, now you're on this roll. Yeah. I go. If I could do ten thousand. Who wants to be a millionaire? Here, I teach people to do this all the time. I go, a millionaire is about eighty thousand a month. Start, start seeing yourself with eighty thousand a month, effortless. Right. What emotions does that invoke? Your heart will take you right to that. Why do, why do you think more people don't tap into this? Because they're taught it's BS. They're like for me, I, I grew up single mom, seven kids, struggle. The the fortunate thing I had was, um, and it was all about education, your grammar. Uh, you know, she was a right, school teacher. Right. And so one of my best friends growing up was uh, the, the Den Herder family. And uh, he didn't have the proper grammar. He didn't have all this, but he was one of the wealthiest people in my town. And I just remember going, okay, they, they ran the sale barn. I grew up from this very farming community in Iowa. So I go, he just goes down to that thing and there's cows and there's cattle and hogs going through there and he gets a piece of every cow and hog that's sold there. He's just down there as an auctioneer. Doing, hey, you know, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just remember they always drove Cadillac DeVille's at the time, these big boats, right? Yeah. And I remember as a little, this is why I still drive a Cadillac actually, because I remember being so poor, we had these old grubby cars that could barely run, you know, single mom. And, yeah, yeah. You know, and I just remember we'd get in that car and I could smell the leather. I'd never smelled a nice car before i was like someday man yeah so i still have one today like you drive a cadillac you go i love them yeah because <laughs> i do i love that i love it not because i'm statusy at all as you know yeah i just yeah. like i love to get in there and smell it and go it feels so nice to have a nice car yeah nice cars are the best yeah they are the best so people are like i wouldn't spend that much money go if you knew you were unlimited you would yeah right yeah of course you would if i had when i have more resources i'm gonna have a fleet 
Yeah, no, bro. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so you're saying it is, yeah, and I, again, Tony Robbins <laughs> talks about it. You have to change your beliefs. And I, I would say people do have to hit certain levels of rock bottom to change. It's like the dog on the nail. They don't analogy. have to, but some, that's usually the trauma that gets them serious enough to change. Yeah. Right? Yeah. To go, I, my, I hate my life so much, I got to fix something. Yeah. Right? And, you th- and part of it is, in your opinion, people just have been so programmed to believe that it is a struggle. 100% or, of it. Yeah. Yeah, not part I'm of it. I'm guilty 100%. of that, too. Yeah. I'm guilty so of it, too. Here's what I think in a nutshell, like you're trying to get practical. It's so easy and practical that we go, can't be that easy. Like, come on, how easy it is to plant a tulip bulb and the tulip knows what to do. Right. Right? The spirit of God's in you. It knows what to do. Well, I think the uneasy part, Mike, is, the, is just the we're such emotional beings. No one's ever taught us to control emotion. Yeah. No one's ever taught us how to redirect emotion. No one's ever taught. And <clears throat> I also think it's part of it, just modern life is just, there's so many distractions. We just don't. Yeah. We're just kind of reacting all day long and we're not. Yeah. We aren't in control of our emotion. Yeah. It's kind of being dictated for us, but. So I think the driver for me would be this is um, whether you call it God, whether you call it the universe. I think it, like I said, I think intuitively all know that there's something out there causing that tulip bulb to grow. There's something out there outside of me that's bigger than me causing the sun to come up. And the earth to perfectly rotate. And the earth to rotate. perfectly yeah. rotate. And the, you know, that when we start talking about light years, the amount of time, a, a, a light year, what it actually is, the distance that light travels in the year. It's is hard like, to fathom. Can't. Yeah, it's hard so to fathom. So something is that big to go, okay, what, what I think is hard for humanity because they've been taught this wrong concept of God is, there is a love that connects every one of us and, and is the source of all things that will bring me good things. Mm. Here's a, here's a question. How do, if someone is low right now, let's say, yeah, they walk into a church. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. No, dude. Right. Let's say they, they lost a job. They're, they're not doing things they want to do. They've gotten kind of stuck in a rut where they, they feel like they're struggling right now. Yeah. Maybe their worth is down. Cause I'd love to know. Yeah. I bet there's people who are going to hear this who don't have the amount of years you have of, of understanding your worth. Yeah. So a, how do they reconnect to their worth Yeah. and B, how do they start to kind of climb out of this? Yeah. Um, yeah. So first thing I would do is, is, uh, just go, what if, what if there, what if, what if what Chris and Mike are talking about is real? Yeah. And here's what you'll find. Love is responsive. Meaning this is, is if, uh, if Barb or my kids ever said, I'm really low right now, I'm really feeling unloved. And if they come to me, if I have an ounce of love in me and they go, I just need you to show me that you love me. What am I going to do? Am I going to go out of my way to try show you like, babe, I didn't even know you were feeling that way. Not if I'm a jerk, I'm not right. But if, if I really, you're my friend, like you and I, if you came to me like that, or if I came to you, I know I could trust that we wouldn't, we would go, Oh bro, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, no, correct. You're, you're amazing. Like, no, come on. What can I do for you? Love responds positively. Right. But we're not taught that about God. So I would do this is go, I'm God. You need to prove yourself to me. I know that sounds weird. I just wrote that down. Right. I just wrote that down that, that most people don't even know how to ask. Just be blunt. You can swear at God, whatever you want to do. Like people like you can't take the, no, that's no mistranslation. Love doesn't care. Love go. I will respond to make sure that Mm. you know you're loved. Mm. So ask, ask God to go, just show me tomorrow that I'm connecting in my prayer. Just give me a, a sign. And if you pay attention, you'll, you'll get it. Mm. There'll be a little, doesn't mean the whole thing happened to you tomorrow, but there'll be little coincidences that go, no way. That's too easy. I was just doing this with a pastor, right? Because he's got this idea of, well, God. Because that's gotta, a powerful idea, like demand from God. Like tell him. Tell, tell love. You, you got to show me. Tell love. I love that. Show me. Right? Show it to me. Prove yeah, it show, to me. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I love and that. And love will show it to you. I love it. And so... I just told this guy, I said, hey, um, this very conversation, I go, God will respond to you. Love is responsive, right? So he, 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 t- he used this simple story where he said that he's, he's taking this trip. He's got this hour drive or whatever. I might get some of it wrong if he ever listens to this, but it's pretty close. And he says, God, all I, here, here's something simple you could do for me where I know it's you and it can't be anything else. When I show up to this place, there will be a piece of peach pie. You can be specific too. That's what's really wild, right? You can go, 
I need you to show me this and it'll show up. So he goes, I drive up and they go, oh, good thing you're here. We have one peach pie left. And then he's like, no, nah, come on. That's just coincidence. I go, come on, come on. Yeah. You, you challenged God to show you that. And did God show up? Yeah. But you, it's so subtle that you think it's, well, that was just coincidence. Sure. Right. And most of us just never even ask the question because I think the worth gets beat out of us. A hundred percent. So yeah. how does, how do we find worth again? Yeah. So once you release all the negative, how do, how do you know that you're worthy? Cause when like, you, here's what, here's what's really cool. Your core knows you're worthy because you're, you were born out of love mm, period. Mm. You're born out of the creative source of all life. Love. Yeah. Right. So when you let go of, when you recognize all those negative feelings and you do a little breath work is the easiest way to do it. Or you can listen to music, whatever calms you down and you recognize, Oh, I'm feeling unloved. I'm going to allow that feeling to just dissolve out of me. Yeah. You will naturally feel love because in its place is harmony and love. Mm. You've just covered it up. Mm. You've covered up all that stuff of years of wrong thinking. The cool part is it can happen. You don't have to take years to reprogram. It happens really fast. Because the truth is too, I think, you know, a lot of us are trying to find worth in our work, yeah. in our, in our external things. Right. And it's an internal job. Yeah. Yeah. If you let go of all the wrong beliefs about yourself, you'll naturally feel loved. You won't have to try because when you let all the junk out, the real you is always present. And yeah. in, in its place is, oh my God, I've always been magnificent. I've always been loved. I've always been this powerful source of God in me. Would you recommend, would you recommend reading books too? Or yeah, like, sure. you, you yeah. should, should you always have like a, like good information coming in or? Is yeah, that- but I, I would say you don't have to because now we're right back into, I must go do this thing, right? Read books if you enjoy books. Mm. If you like to, if you like to do music, Maddie, do music. Right. Do something you enjoy. Right. 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 But I never wanted to get to the place where I, I don't know the answer, so I must go find it in an outside source. Right. Because the spirit of God in me wrote all those things, so I can go straight to the source. Right. It's kind of like the idea, like I know a guy who's struggling right now because he he's tied his worth, and I think a lot of us do. Uh, we've tied our worth to how much money I have or how much yeah. success I have or how much free time I have or you know, am I really in control of my time? You know, someone yeah. may, may be in a tough spot listening to this in a job they don't like going, yeah, that sounds awesome, but... Yeah. You know, I still have a stark reality I have to go to, but this guy is struggling pretty mightily because he, he had some, he had some failures and I don't think his, you know, I think in his head, he has to have 300 grand in the bank and, 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 you know, be working 10 hours a week. And, and, um, and I think social media sort of reinforces the fact that there are people who have more than you materially. Yeah. Um, and so he's sort of struggling with that external idea and it's really like beating him down. Yeah. So it would be that is um, when you know you have access to an unlimited source, you don't feel, see, it's this fear of lack, right? Uh. Those three fears. My bank account's dictating how I feel versus I get to dictate how I feel. Because mm. I know how I feel is going to create the physical world. It's Einstein's favorite quote. He goes, the field dictates the particle or the material world. Right. We think it's the other way around. We must go work physically to dictate the result. Oh, it's the energy that dictates the result. He also had a great quote where he said, you can change reality. 100%. You can bend reality. Because the well. physical world responds to the energy, the, the spiritual world, right? Mm. Like it's, it's as simple as some of you guys remember like your, your grade school science teacher where he's got a magnet under a piece of paper and metal filings. It's not touching that metal, but somehow it arranges the, the physical objects. Right. Well, it's the energetic field that's rearranging those. Right. And here's the really cool part. If you spent... You don't have to be a pro at this. You can change your life today within this week. If you just spent some time, I love my life. Everything's going great. It's, if you really just did a little breath work or somehow got into a, a little quieter state where you're not worrying about everything yeah. and start enjoying your life a little bit, in a week you can change uh, 200% the energy of your heart. So yeah. Do you think... Do you think uh... If you change the energy... The, E equals MC squared, right? Energy equals the material world, matter, divided times speed of light squared. So if you little algebra, just think about this. You, you divide C squared on both sides. You've got energy, your emotion, divided by 186,000 miles per second squared. That is a big number. Yeah. Right? So if, if, I've got, if I've got one divided by the number one, divided by 186,000 miles per second squared, 
that energy is a very, very tiny number, right? Yeah. You going from, I'm angry, I'm pissed, uh, I'm worried about tomorrow to I'm grateful changes your entire life. Mm. Doesn't take much. See, people think it's hard. I go a tiny, tiny bit of emotion changes your whole life. Yeah. I mean, I definitely got into space with fit soda where I wasn't grateful anymore. Yeah. Cause it, yeah, <laughs> life's happening. Right. And we're, 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 we're responding to the emotion and yeah. the outside world, not realizing the source of that thing is in Chris's heart. If he changes how he feels, the outside world must change. It's a law. Yeah fuck then it, then life becomes easy right it's yeah. like oh i realize all i need to do is and it, it doesn't take long if you you it's can gratitude too right it's gratitude like like i mean i used to say this a lot maddie used to have a button for this when i would soapbox it's a sad <laughs> he'll play it it's a, it's a sad it's a sad song he would always play for me um <laughs> i miss this <laughs> yeah he would play this for me when i would soapbox <laughs> I'm like kids don't understand, I, I, I just go off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a uh, classic, that, right? Man. That's Joe Dispenza when the people tell him, "You don't know this," and I'm, I'm married to a narcissist, and da, 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 and you always go the violin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go. I know, I know, I know, I know. You got the story of all stories. We've identified the problem. Do you want to talk about the solution? Right. Yeah. yeah. yeah amen to that. Yeah. Yeah. I. Uh, no, and, and people don't realize how good it is right now. Like, we're in the top 1% of the 100 billion people who've ever oh lived. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Grat gratitude, gratitude is, uh, I think it's what got me back out of the funk I was in, is just realizing how good I, I do yeah. have it. Even, even with, you, you know where it changed for me, Mike, was learning that some of the failures, failures we had at FitSoda, when I recognized it is part of my learning process, that, that really your third, fourth, fifth businesses are your real usually the, the biggest usually. ones you ever create yeah that i realized i was in good company with with titans before me who've lost billions Almost of dollars everybody. who've lost billions who've had to lay people off who right um and i started to be grateful for the lesson that it was yep. teaching me that it was pruning me that it was i i had some hard truths i had to i had to recognize and swallow and deal with uh and when i started to be grateful for that lesson instead of being mad at it and mad at everything else yep uh, you know everything started to change for me again. Yeah, and why is that Why is that negative thing happening in my life? If you understand true love, that we're all swimming in this energy of love, this creation of love, he's going, Chris, there's something I want you to let go of that's not true about you, and that the reason this situation's coming up in your life is so you can be free from it forever. Mm. Do you think people will suffer failure and then just live in that negative emotion? Oh, or, yeah, yeah, sure. And that's what destroys them ultimately? Sure. yeah. I mean, you have a choice, right? Yeah. Uh, one of, you, I remember one of your things, like um, you asked, uh, what are your influences? Uh, I love this guy called Klaus Obermeier up in Aspen, right? If you go onto YouTube and just, he started Obermeier Ski Gear. You know, it's a billion dollar ski brand. They basically, he and his partners built the town of Aspen, what it is today. So he's- Klaus Obermeier. Klaus Obermeier, like Obermeier Ski Jackets, right? Does he have, uh, he doesn't do content and stuff. You're just saying- No, no, this okay. is on, on YouTube, but- um, I think his latest one, I might have missed a year now. He's 104 and he still skis every day. Wow. And he talks about this idea where he goes, um, uh, you know, it was during, during uh, World War II and he was Jewish and he was trying to escape into, the Gestapo literally shot him. And he was trying to escape into Austria. And uh, so he, he finally gets out and uh, he goes, um, he's, he's getting ready to come to the United States. He goes, I had $10 in my pocket but I was coming to the United States. He goes, it's like bringing water to a fountain. I had everything. So in, in his talk where he's talking about, um, if you go watch just, they're like five minute YouTube videos. They're so awesome. So uh, one, of, one of the first times we'd ever gone up to Aspen, Barb and I, and I remember reading this little thing in Aspen magazine about him. And at the time he was 96 and he skied every day. And then I watched a little YouTube content I mean, how many 96-year-olds do you know that are skiing every day? Very little. Right? And he goes, he goes, we all have the choice. Oh, he says some great things. Can I share? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. He says some things that are just challenge you. He goes, we all have a choice to think positively or negatively. And then here's what's really crazy, because he knew he was tapped into a bigger love and a bigger source than him. He basically invented the modern ski industry, meaning this is, he chose, he specifically chose not to patent most of his inventions. 
Which is wild. Because he wasn't worried about, and if you watch that video. Me, 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 my, my, my. He goes, I love skiing. He goes, don't get hung up on money. And he does this visual. He goes, don't get up hung up on money, where he, he closes himself in. It's such a great visual. He goes, we love skiing, and we want to share it with people. He goes, the reason I didn't patent it is because I wanted skiing to become this huge thing where if I could create the pie and make the pie big enough for everybody, my piece would be plenty. I don't need to create a patent. And he's done so many things, like metal, aluminum poles, the, the ski boots, um, the first down parka he invented. Yeah. And he didn't patent any of it on purpose. Wow. Because he knew he had an abundant source. He goes, it's like taking water to a fountain. It's always there. I can drink from that fountain as much as I want called life. Wow, that's deep. Isn't that cool? That's deep. And, he, and I go, that works. He's not sick. He's not going to the hospital. He's 104 and he skis, babe. That go, that's my hero right there. That's awesome. And he's a billionaire. Come on. <sighs> and he goes, it's all choice. I can choose to respond to life negatively or positively. Yeah, Whew. Victor Frankl said that in Search of Meaning. It goes back to recognizing your emotion, controlling it. Uh, you said something. We were talking about some, some fellows we know who are going through a lawsuit. And yeah. I think the predominant business standard operating procedures if someone takes you sue you yeah. you come down on them hard you you know and it's reinforced from television and and you know protect your house and all that and, yep. and i think that's another example of like like the other guy should just let it go and 100 percent because he's he's creating more negative energy yeah yeah uh, it, that's a whole nother talk <laughs> yeah like our whole legal system is built on a mistranslation of scripture it's fascinating because they look at they, they look at Old Testament law, right? In, in in Hebrew, it's called Torah, Torah. Yeah. And uh, if you go look at the left top, the strength of God is always pictures of of an ox or a bull, which is where we get the saying "strong as an ox," right? I'll show you afterwards. We don't have time here, but if you go into Strong's, because most people are taught these are God's laws, and they list the laws: you thou shalt not do this, thou shalt not do that, da 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 da. The other talk is there's no no's or nots. Everything in the scriptures are divine promises. It doesn't say, Chris, don't do X. Yeah. Because you can't do it. If I say, don't think of a white coffee cup, thou shalt not think of a white coffee cup. Mm -mm. So all these pastors that are railing about, thou shalt not do this, just know they surely are going to do it. Right. Because that's how we're wired. Right. If I put a picture in your mind, you're going to go do it. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, I think. But Torah, we think it's God's rules. Thou shalt not do this. You know where it says, thou shalt not, uh, this is a whole other talk, but I'm trying to help you yeah, yeah. people that read that book. Guys, everything in that book is divine promise. It's talking about you shall experience the power of God. Yeah. They're promises. Mm -hmm. if, where it says, thou shalt not commit adultery. I'm not telling people to go commit adultery. It, literally what it says, it says in the, in the original Hebrew pictures, it says, thou shalt experience the love of another that's not your spouse. Well, who is this other? It's God itself. Right, right. Isn't that wild? It is wild. I, I, would, I keep thinking of examples at, at the company when I think it works in management too. If you constantly rail on people about not doing a certain thing, they're going to go do it. They're going to go do it. It's like little, we were little boys, right? If you go, now you little boys, don't be throwing rocks. We weren't throwing rocks. I'm going to go. <laughs> not now. <laughs> now, now I want to throw I know some you rocks. And I, right? You and I are going to go. Wow. Nobody's looking. Let's go throw some rocks. We should have our own podcast where we talk about this all the time. Yeah, sure. <laughs> no, it's yeah, true. Sure. It's true, right? It's true. Yeah, sure. You tell somebody not to do it, they're going to go do it. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, I think this is a good end. Yeah, bro. This hey, is amazing. No, you're magnificent. If you're listening to this, uh, you're magnificent. You truly can't have anything. You, can, you have access to a power that can give you anything you want. And it will give it anything you want. You don't have to do it right. Love doesn't go. You must do this right. Yeah. It responds to you. So just try it. Just go, if I could have anything, this is how awesome I would feel. <sighs> I'm going to trust love to show me. Show me tomorrow that you give me a sign, God, that you're listening to me, that I'm connecting to you. And you watch what happens. Amazing. Uh, Mark Popovich, everybody, Freedom Ministries, YouTube. We'll put it in the description. Yeah, sure. Go check out his videos. Uh, Amazing show. Right, love you, bro. Love you too, buddy. Greed is good. Put that coffee down. Coffee's for closers only. Yeah, you're going to
Now it's a matter of time. The question is whether they're going to have a good story to tell about you when you're gone. As you're turning out, versus you rent a very fast car with no top. No top. And I got blue cushions. Cushions. Cushions.